guys and welcome back to another tutorial so today we're going to be looking at a kind of inverted version of the cave plants and I've already covered a lot of the cave plant methods that I've used for them in a tutorial later I think last week now the only difference with this is really the orientation that I'm telling it to go on the block I will be doing one on the sides of the walls as well but I have to kind of do tweak the code a little bit in order to do that so I thought I would just quickly do one for the ground and then you guys can see how this basically is set up so if we go outside of the cave and you can kind of see that uh, they do generate quite a bit and that's down to how many structures there are um, actually generating and then you'll actually notice a lot more in the like open areas and stuff like that so um, again if you haven't watched the other tutorial I it does explain a lot in there I'm not planning on explaining too much just the changes that I've done with the code from that tutorial so I'll make sure to link it down in the description so basically what it is is in short it will detect if there is dirt um, diorite, andesite, granite, or stone on the floor or the block that is there and then it's going to basically offset the structure uh, to the surface. Now to create the structure, I didn't cover this in the last tutorial because I probably forgot. So if we go to creative, game mode, creative, and I'll just quickly show you how to uh, get the thing all settled uh, for the structure. I think I have it under plants. So if we grab the block for the um, structure, and then we need a structure structure void or a structure block. So give and then at a structure and structure block should come up. And then what you want to do is you just want to look at the axis. Place that down like that. Now, depending on how big your plant is, you'll have to adjust the size, but because this is only a one block thing, then all we need to do is set the coordinates to one block. We place our plant inside that model, and then we save it, and then it will save it uh, to whatever name that we basically add to it. And then you just use that structure in the structure uh, generation for the model itself. So let's go into MCreator and I'll show you basically the changes that I've made to the uh, from the past tutorial into this tutorial, and then I'll kind of explain it, explain anything else that needs to be explained. Okay, so again, we have all our textures that we have here. We have one for our particles, one for our item texture for a plant, and then we also have one for our block texture as well, which is the same texture for the plant as well for the item. Uh, for the models, uh, we have, or blocks, we have one block and one particle and two procedures. Now the, I believe this one here is for the structure generation. This controls uh, where the just making sure that the block where it's basically generating is air and that's a additional condition and where this one is it basically allows us to um, spawn the particles on the client side uh, depending on a random location so that's all this one does I've covered it in the other tutorial uh, make sure to check it out for more in-depth on those Again, the structure though, uh, we have just a little bit of changes here. Uh, same properties as last time. The only difference is rather than having a negative number for Y, we have switched it to a positive number and we have select our cave plant and everything else is exactly the same. Nothing else has changed. Uh, we just need to set this to a positive number so it goes on top of the block rather below the block. And uh, yeah, that's the only thing that's changed in there. You still need uh, 30 <laughs> or more, depending on how often you want your plant to spawn uh, structures of the same type of structure in order to generate it quite a bit. So that's the only reason why there's so many structures. Uh, 
uh, the block itself, uh, not much has changed. I th think it was... Yeah, all these properties should be the same as last time. If we go into here, I think they're all the same still. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm not... Okay, no, there is a small change here. I basically, last tutorial, I had it... Uh, basically set to none for the random model offset. I have set it to X and Z for you guys to kind of see that it was offset from the center of the block. It's random when it's like this. So that's the only difference with that. Uh, for MBT, we didn't use any. And our triggers for our client display tick for the particles are located here. Uh, generation wise we have generation disabled so we don't need it to generate anywhere naturally we're doing that through structures and the particles the particles are a little bit different as well uh, for example I have where is it uh, particle visual scale no uh, velocity, acceleration, particle gravity. So this is where um, I basically the only thing that I basically changed here outside of the texture. So basically with the particle gravity if you set it to a negative number it will make the particles go upwards rather than downwards. A solid number like a positive number will make them go downwards like in the other tutorial that we did. Uh, this basically just inverts that and makes them go and flow upwards. So that's the only difference that I basically did with this particular one. And yeah, that's about it. So uh, again, I will link to the video down below if you want to go and watch the tutorial um, that I explained how to make hanging plants. Uh, the tutorial actually explains all the procedures more in depth and each individual setting and stuff like that. So make sure to go check that out. And outside of that, that's all the time that I have for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.